All right. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we'd like to uh, give a thank you to our sponsors for this track, uh, NT Objectives, that have sponsored this room and this track. We've got a great talk for you now on uh, using interactive static analysis for early detection of software vulnerabilities. And uh, we've got uh, Bill Chu and Jun Zhu from uh, University of uh, North Carolina, Charlotte, that are going to speak to you. Thank you very much. Uh, the story we're going to uh, tell, uh, the story we're going to tell is uh, essentially doing interactive static analysis as developers type. So people are used to using IDEs like Eclipse. When you type in, make a syntax error, you get warned of, of results, of, of, of errors. And we want to do that for uh, static analysis, finding uh, software vulnerabilities. That's essentially what we're, we're trying to do. Uh, I think uh, Michael Howard's talk this uh, lunchtime sort of sets the stage very well. Uh, education is a huge issue. People are not trained. And even if people are trained, they often forget because you have pressures, deadlines, et cetera. So, uh, um, so, so what we're trying to do is to fill that gap, to be very uh, mindful, to, to keep it at the front of uh, uh, people's uh, 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 consciousness. So, so, the, the, so the, the basic observation is current static and dynamic analysis tools are, are reactive. You, you sort of do this after you have reached some checkpoint, so it, you're, you're not fixing the bug as you, as you produce them. You're sort of some distance away from that, and, and they're typically run by security professionals. So our approach is, as I mentioned earlier, is, is really push the envelope of interactivity along with the construction of the code while developers are writing code. And, and th therefore, uh, by mixed initiative, we mean it's developer-oriented, and we want to keep developers in the loop. So the advantage is uh, um, you know, it's proactive support of developers with vulnerability de detection and prevention. We want to specifically leverage developers' knowledge about application context and logic to uh, drive customized st static analysis, because a lot of times when you use static analysis, you're used, used by security professionals, and they don't really have the application context. So we're trying to use this tool to bridge the two, and we'll show you a, a couple of demos about that. And, then, and, and of course, the whole idea is to drive to fix vulnerabilities as early as possible, because you know, we, we heard Gene Kim's talk that sometimes you don't get around fixing these vulnerabilities, even if you know they exist. So uh, the, uh, there's two kinds of interactive st static analysis we, we have uh, uh, implemented. Uh, one is uh, interactive data flow analysis, which you know, everybody is familiar with, the typical kinds of tank propagation and, and injection attack sort of uh, analysis for, for, for detecting injection analysis, uh, in, injection vulnerabilities. We also are uh, experimenting with what we call interactive control flow analysis. The idea is sometimes you have, you have security policies, invariants, things like access control policies, CSERF protection, et cetera, that uh, you want to make sure that when you write code, you have, have satisfied those policies. And they're very difficult to detect with data flow analysis. They're really control flow problems. So, so we have some ideas on how to deal with that, and I'll show you, share that with you. Now, uh, I gave a version of this talk last year uh, in Minneapolis at AppSec USA. Uh, so so uh, I will spend a few minutes, the next few minutes, just sort of give you a little bit of a rehash of what we did last year because uh, some of you may not be, uh, may not have been there. And, and, but we have done a lot of new work since then, so we'll show you more results and, and we'll also show you some of our current research things that, that, that we're working on right now. So with that, uh, uh, what I'm going to show next is our prototype demo of, of a project called ASAI, which stands for uh, uh, Application Security in an ID Environment. And part of this is an open source OS project, so, so you can Google uh, OS ASAI and, and you'll find the page. And uh, so, uh, so our design rationale is this is designed to be used by developers, not to security professionals. Uh, we want to have the developers be sort of recognize instead of recalling security problems. You see, instead of when I'm writing code, thinking about what sort of problems I should prevent, we, should want, we want the tool to tell the developers, hey, you want to think about that, all right? Uh, we want to, by, by so, by minimizing extra burden on developers, uh, and then we also want to, again, leverage developers' knowledge in terms of customized security analysis. So with that, 
Uh, June is going to sh show the live demo of, of our system, both the in interactive data flow analysis and a data flow static analysis, and I'll come back and talk to you a little bit more about the, 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 some of the theory and the lining design issue behind it. So, so what he's going to do is going to show you uh, 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 an example in an, in, a, in, a, in an Eclipse environment. So we have our uh, uh, plugin running, a, a side plugin running. So as you see, that there are two warnings, and these warnings are generated because you are reading untrusted data. In this case, get parameter, right? So this is an untrusted data. So if you comment it out online, line, just show you how it's interactive it is. So if you comment it out the line, the warning goes away. If you uncommented it, it shows up. So this is the, the kind of interactive style that we're driving for. So now if you look at, if you click on the devil's icon, it, it tells you that, you know, in this case, it's, it's a, it's a, you need to do input validation for this thing, right? And what we have done is we have put all the ISAPI library underneath. So, you know, developer can go down this and, and choose what validation mechanism he or she wishes to choose. So if they choose something, say for example, safe string, and then we'll actually generate code. Now, some developers don't like it, some developers will like it, so, so this is, you know, we're not saying this is one size fit all, but this is some of the options that you could do. Uh, in the next case, in this case, you know, uh, the, 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 the request parameter is passed through an integer, so, you know, you don't have to worry about it, right? So now you can, you, you, you can also choose to ignore it, and, 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 and this warning will go away. So the idea is, you know, as you type in, uh, uh, th this gets done. Uh, yeah, yes, sir. Where is the request to ignore that one stored? Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's stored along with the the workspace, uh, along with the project. So it's not, not in the code, it's in the, it's in the metadata about the. Right, 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 right. Yes, yes. Okay. Right now, uh, we also do something with the dynamic SQL statements. So if 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 people ever were to use dynamic SQL statements, we warn them and say this is not something you should do, okay? We want to stop them you know, in, in sort of very, very uh, clear terms. All right, so this is uh, just a very quick overview of what interactive data flow analysis looks like. Uh, so let's look at uh, the next part, which is the interactive control flow analysis. And, and the idea we, we propose here is what we call interactive code annotation. So here's an example where, uh, let's say you, you you, you have access some sensitive database table. So the, the context is you have some security, you know, uh, uh, you know, application security people or security lead that for a project you would say, these tables are sensitive, okay? Whenever you change the state of these tables, you need to do access control or need to do uh, protection of uh, CSERF, right? And so what we do then, once you've declared that this is all policy driven, you can write in rules, so it's not hardwired into the code. And as developers write code that touches these tables, we throw up a warning, right? We throw up a warning at the level of your entry level method, whether it's a, an action or a servlet, something that starts your web transaction. So the reason we throw up that particular warning let me just go back, that flag, is because in this procedure, in this function call, if we go drill into it, it actually accesses the database, right? So SQL statements. So our rule says if you touch this table, we want you to annotate for, for access control. So, so then you have the, the, the warning. So if you click on this flag, we ask you to show us where your access control logic is. Now, not every sort of piece of code that uh, passes as access control logic. They must be Boolean expressions. So in this particular case, you want, to alloc you want to annotate, so you go back and you say, okay, here is checking the user session is not now. I annotate that. And then there's another one that the user actually owns the account, right? Now, so this information, again, is stored in the metadata that basically says, for this particular access control, those, these are actually my logic that does the access control check. Now, just to show you that if you just throw some, you know, like assignment statement, you try to annotate that, you can add a third statement, and because it's not a Boolean expression, a site is going to just ignore it. So it's only looking for Boolean expressions that are connected along the execution path, so it understands the the, the control flow path, right? Now, 
the, the, the interesting idea, the proposal we have is, you know, we also heard some speakers talk about uh, uh, code review being, you know, this great idea of code, code review. But code review is incredibly difficult. Uh, one of the reasons it's incre incredibly difficult is because, you know, you, you got to talk to somebody, see what you actually did, right? So what we're trying to do is, you know, it doesn't solve all the problems, but the, 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 the hypothesis is with a tool like this, you could start build some critical annotations so that somebody, without actually having to talk to, sit down face to face with a developer, I can pull up the code and say, you know, you know for, my, for my organization, when you touch this piece of data, I want to make sure somebody inspected the code, and then the tool can actually give you some, some, some ideas. Yes. Uh, in our current implementation, no. Okay, but but you know, there's no reason why it should. You, you could save this with along with the metadata. So when you open up, I mean, in our current implementation, as long as your your, your workspace is alive, yes. But if you kill the app, you kill the workspace. We we have you know this experimental code. We haven't gotten to the point of sort of making that persistent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, uh, there are a lot of UI issues, obviously. Okay, but th th this is the idea. Just, you know, th this is the proposition. All right. So, so those are the the, the uh, just give you a, a sort of a very quick uh, a taste of, of what this interactive uh, static analysis looks like. Let's go back to the the um, presentation. Okay. All right. So again. To, re, re, uh, to, to rehash, it is uh, interactive data flow analysis is policy driven, take advantage of uh, uh, you know, essentially popular data flow analysis algorithms. We want to remind and assist developers fix each taint source through automatic validation and, and code refactoring and, uh, and instantly reanalyze uh, the code. With uh, co control flow analysis, we identify critical sensitive operational code and, and this is the part what I mean by leveraging application context and developer knowledge. So developer, as they are writing code, they say, okay, where did you do it? We believe that is the hypothesis, is that's the time they're most familiar with the application context and knowledge. They could provide that information. And what I'll show you is how this kind of information can actually be used to do additional static analysis, things that you couldn't do in typical static analysis tools today. <laughs> So, uh, um, uh, so, 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 give you an idea of what sort of analysis you could do with this additional information that you could couldn't easily do with current static analysis tool. So, so imagine this example. I'll give you a concrete code example later on. So, you have some kind of kind of web entry, right? And then it goes to some database access, and then you ask the developer, say, where is your access control check, say, for example, or CSERF protection for that particular update. And then the, this squiggly sign on the side is where the annotation is. And with that information, we can run static analysis by looking at all possible paths from all possible web entry to that particular database operation. And if we find there is a path along which there is no annotation, then that is a possible point for uh, for bypassing of authentic check, right, for access control. So, so we actually have found code, found those kinds of vulnerabilities in, 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 in real life code, and I'll, I'll show you an example of that. Now that's the kind of analysis that you couldn't really do uh, easily with current static analysis tool because the, the transfer of knowledge between your developers and your security code auditors sort of to write rules to do that is just so complex, it's just not gonna happen. And, and, and so now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about evaluation. Okay, this is great. So, you know, I mean, we're, we're in research world. We're not in sort of a, a, a product. So, so we have to say, you know, how, how well that works. So we, we, uh, we, 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 we uh, uh, did an in-depth analysis of an open source project, Apache Roller, which has about 65,000 lines of Java code. And it's quite, late, quite widely used. So if you do, you know, Google search powered by Roller, you know, probably over a million sites pop up, uh, and it's actually uh, actively maintained. So this is a reasonably uh, well-maintained uh, uh, open source project. So what we did is first we look at uh, evaluation of interactive data flow analysis. We take the Apache Roller and we benchmark it against 
Fortify SCA. So we have uh, uh, John Melton, some of you may know him, he's here at the conference, he's the, the, the lead for the AppSensor project, and uh, uh, he happens to be a former student of mine, so, so I say, John, hey, you know, I know you do a lot of static analysis, why don't you do a benchmark for us? So he spent two days, did a professional job of doing static analysis on Roller, all right? So, so what he would have done for a, for, a, for a commercial job. And then what we did was we, 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 we ran this against a side and compare our results against his results. We're using that as Oracle. So we, what we found was that Aside found, we're only looking for, you know, Aside is only looking for taint source propagation kinds of problems. So 92% of the problems he found, Aside also found, right? And uh, 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 the, 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 there are two issues that are not detected by Aside, but mostly those are JSP issues. We haven't really uh, implemented JSP detection in our Aside yet. There's no reason why we couldn't. It just, you know, it's a research prototype. We, uh, there are some struts. Uh, uh, fun, uh, 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 structures that, that, again, we have not implemented. So, so the ones that, that, that's not covered are the ones that we could easily extend our, our prototype to deal with. We also found some more things that Fortify didn't recognize as, as, as problems, but we found that they were problems. So, so these are problems you know, basically falling into two categories. One category is uh, you, 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 you've, you've read untrusted data, but you sort of didn't do anything with it. So Fortify says, since it doesn't do anything, none of the rules uh, uh, trigger, so I'm not going to worry about it. Whereas we take the approach that says, if you touch untrusted data, we ask you to validate it. All right? Now, the philosophy there is eventually, somehow, this data may get used through extension, so it's better to sort of validate it at the beginning. So those fall into these categories. There are some, some uh, um, uh, false positive as well. So an example of false positive is, you know, somebody is reading it in a binary value and it can only be interpreted as true and false. So, uh, so, 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 you know, that's, that's, that's very application specific and aside wouldn't be able to tell that. So there are some of, of those kinds of things. And, and out of the 120, 118, we, we recognize, we, 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 we classify 24 as being of that type. So those are the false positives. And we also evaluated interactive control flow analysis. So what, 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 what again we did is, again, remember, interactive control flow analysis is about annotation. So we ran a side against, uh, against Rolla. By the way, both uh, uh, the, the, this version is implemented by a, a former student of mine. She just de defended her PhD dissertation. So, so, th so we, we, we sort of took her code, we ran it against a side, and, uh, and, and so we simulated what the developer would have to go through if they were writing the code using a side. And we, we were specifically looking for CSERF protection. So whenever the, the uh, 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 Rolla changes its data, its state, you know, adds, you know, for example, add a, add a blog entry, changes its state, we ask where is the CSERF protection mechanism, okay? And sure enough, we found seven zero days. There were seven vulnerabilities that started at least from Rolla 3.1 to Rolla 5.1, which is the current release, that you know, they, they've done numerous facelifts in frameworks and all these jazz and UI, but those CSERF protection code just sort of sailed on. So we pen tested all the versions in the middle. They all have these problems. We uh, reported to the robot Rolla team and they fixed it and they credited us for, for finding those Rolla days, so zero days. So, so that's sort of, in our mind, is at least preliminary proof that if you had something like that, hey, you know, this is basically not rocket science, right? It's just when you're writing code, the, 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 the tool says, hey, where is your CSERF protection? And, and, and we, we think that, you know, people know what, what, what to do, but they just forgot for, for whatever reason. So here is an example. Uh, this is the actual code. So you, as you can see that this uh, uh, web lock save uh, web entry, this is when Rolla commits the, the web entry into the database. And, and at that point, we would have, as you see here uh, uh, with the red flag, we say, well, where's your CSERF protection? And the developer will look at this and says, okay, I checked for authentication, but I didn't check for CSERF. So hopefully, somebody would have thought about it and added the tool, added the CSERF protection in. Of course, we cannot ensure whether they added it correctly or not, but, but at least they, have, they would have to think about it. 
All right, so, so that's uh, 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 the, the quick overview of, of uh, evaluation, you know, how effective it is. So we have some preliminary data against a open source project that, that seems like it, it should work, okay? Uh, we also thought about education as we started out with this presentation and say, well, you know, universities don't teach secure coding. Uh, the reason is most faculty, like developers, never training secure coding, right? And uh, we have security courses, right? We talk about, you know, policies and, uh, uh, you know, access control and all that, but we don't necessarily connect this with code, right? And, uh, um, and uh, uh, so, so, so the same problem that we have in the industry. So how about using aside as an education tool? So because most of our students go through the four-year computer science program, will have to use Eclipse, Java to write their projects and stuff. So, so the hypothesis is why do we just throw this in there and then and, and see people can learn uh, by 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 using this tool. And uh, we we uh, we we uh, uh, got a grant from National Science Foundation, so we we built. Uh, this this uh, uh, evaluation exercise. So what we did was, uh, so what we do a demo, why don't we do a demo for the, the education version. Now, the education version is essentially the same version you saw, but what we did was we added a lot more explanations because we thought that, you know, these people would have never heard about secure programming. They, you know, ma many of them have never heard about SQL injection. So, so when we throw warning at these people, we want to sort of explain to them what they do. So we, we so this is our first attempt at, at, at doing that. So if you click on this thing, again, you see this. Uh, along with the, the, the choices, we have, we added the, the, the read, read more button, in which case we, oh, yeah. we go online. And then we, 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 we sort of explain what is input validation. You go on and, and, and the, the type of attacks. And we also link in whatever appropriate material from OWASP website. So, so you, from there, you can have jump off points to OWASP. Right? So, 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 so it's as, a, as an integration of that. So let's, go, let's look at the, the, the dynamic SQL case. Right, so here's a dynamic SQL statement. You do read more. It says, don't do this, but we also tell people what they should do. So here's a, a, a page explaining what is SQL injection and, uh, and how to do it right. In this case, use parameterized uh, SQL statements. We even have uh, sample code people can look at, and so on and so forth. All right? So this is the version we implemented, so it's designed to be used by students. And so what we did was say, OK, you know, we have to evaluate how effective that is, right? So, so let's go back to the thing. All right, so, so we did evaluation. Uh, we, we just, uh, uh, just before the, uh, this, this, this conference, so our paper got accepted, so, so, so we feel much more comfortable talking about it. So we, we recruited 20 graduate students uh, who have no secure programming training at all, because they were just fresh uh, uh, master students or senior undergraduate students. And they were working on a web-based application project that, that uses you know, typical stuff, SQL, you know, uh, 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 it's a Java-based web application. And we asked them to work in the lab uh, on machines with, with a site installed for, two, uh, for three hours. We gave them a little bit of incentive so for them to do that. And, uh, and we administered a, a set of questions, which are true-force questions, before they start the project. All right, so these are you know, typical secure programming kinds of questions. And then we asked them to work three hours on their project. And then they can, by the way, this is all transparent. They can save their project as a WAR file and then go home and, and continue to work on, on, their, on their own, on their laptops. So this is what we do. And then we also do a post uh, three hour test. So in other words, we get a version of our test uh, that, that very much similar, but it's a randomized, quite different set of questions, also true-false questions. We test them after they have used the tool for three hours. Now, what you would expect, being true-false questions, you know, you get 50% chance of getting right, right? So, indeed, before, the, before they use the tool, uh, the average score is like 53%. So it's roughly about, you know, random. But after, they got 10% increase. 
okay? And we, we ran through, you know, standard statistical analysis tools, and it shows it's very statistically very significant. So the idea is, you know, just after using three hours, they, be, they began to learn the concepts of input validation, of output encoding, and things like that. This is not with anybody teaching them. They're just, by reading the material, going to OWASP, understanding those kinds of information. Another interesting thing is, uh, remember the SQL statements, right? So for all the students, none of them use prepare statements. They all use Google, so we actually, should, because we, we record their keystrokes using the screen capture functions. They, we, we see them actually go, go online, search, and they find, guess what they find? They find dynamic SQL statements, right? They cut and paste, they put stuff in there. None of them use prepared statements. But a side warns them, say, don't do that, and then here's the, the stuff, even though you know, for, for our ethical purposes, we have to go through ethical review boards for human subject studies. We could not give people extra credit for doing security right, because the course is not about security. You know, we, we do, in, do not interfere with the, the way the course was taught. So, so getting the security right doesn't give students any extra points. But even in the context of that, 25% uh, of the students voluntarily change their dynamic SQL statements to prepared statements. All right, so, so that's, that's kind of very heartening. I mean, you know, just so, so that students really care, they see these things as they, you know, they probably have heard about SQL injection, but they don't really don't know what it is. So they, they, they understand it's a bad thing. Uh, we, what we see is for those 25% students, they would actually go on to Google search, find more about how to write prepared SQL, uh, prepared SQL statements right, and then sort of adapt it and then and put them in their code. So that's, that's, that's really interesting. So, 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 so at least our preliminary results shows that you know, if you have something like that and imagine you can reinforce this throughout classrooms with professors, hopefully after four years people see this thing repeatedly that they, they, they'll understand a little bit about secure programming when they graduate. So, so, uh, so, so, so that sort of uh, concludes my second part of my talk. First part is sort of overview, just like a demo. Second part is evaluation, how well it, how well it works. Now I'm going to move to the third part of the talk, which is some of the, the, the research issues that we're working on. And this is not implemented. You know, a lot of that stuff is still in, in, in the laboratory situation. Now, uh, the current implementation of static analysis is, even though it's interactive from a user's perspective, but we are rebuilding the, the, the analysis every time somebody hits a key, right? Which is, you know, for, for a classroom project, which is fine. You know, you know, the computers are fast enough. It's not a big problem. But for, for larger projects, that, that's obviously not going to work. So what we're going to try, what we're doing on this actually part of his uh, PhD dissertation is to look at multi-threaded incremental static analysis algorithm. So the idea is we take advantage of the Eclipse architecture. Actually, it's architected very nicely that you have a, a, a sort of the, the JDT sort of base. And then you have a thread that, that deals with UI, because Eclipse wants to make sure that the user interaction gets highest priority. You do not want to freeze the user from doing anything else. Right? So the, the plugin are relegated in separate threads. So, so what we want to do is we want to take advantage of this architecture by running our interactive data flow and control flow analysis in the background, utilizing multi-core processors. And then the, whole, the idea is as, you know, go, go to the next slide. Uh, so, as, so as developers type in code and they change the AST, we want to be able to see, well, has the AST changed and then build incremental uh, changes into our control flow diagram and data flow diagrams and, uh, and then perform our analysis and get feedback. To the, to the developers. So, so we're working on this, this interactive version of the incremental version of the, the algorithm. I also want to talk a little bit about the path coverage algorithm, which I, I talked to you a little bit about, which is you know, once you have the, the analysis, how do you take advantage of this information and find additional vulnerabilities? So, uh, uh, so this, is, this is an algorithm, what we call the, the path coverage analysis. This is a, a particular analysis. It's, again, looking for invariants. You know, uh, we're assuming that the user is going to give us those, uh, the, the developers are going to give us those invariants. And then our goal is to look at all possible paths throughout the execution of the program, see if all the paths are covered by, control, uh, by, by Boolean checks. If they are not 
if they are not covered, then that signifies some kind of a bypass problems. So we, what we found, this was uh, uh, also reported last year when we were uh, at OASP last year, but it was not implemented. It was kind of a theory. And, and, and uh, uh, so, so over the last, over this past summer, he actually implemented this algorithm. So we have a version of this algorithm implemented already. And again, we use Rolla as an example. So here's the actual piece of code in Rolla that had this vulnerability in it. And, uh, and if you go on to there. Okay, so here's a, 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 a piece of code where uh, the, the, the one in, uh, um, in, in, in pink, uh, you know, process sketch, right? So this is where you, you get the work done, right? And uh, the reason it's, 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 it's done is because that's where the, 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 the database gets updated, all right? And uh, let's see, what, what is it? Okay, yeah, it was database that gets updated. And all your access control logic check are in what is the golden box in the handle, uh, what is this called? The handle, uh, you know, get handler, all right? So, so, so we, 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 again, we simulated what a side would have done with, with, uh, with, with uh, annotation. So we asked the user, say, hey, I look at your handle process get, which will update your database, right? Where is your access control check for this particular operation? And, uh, and then you go through the code, and, 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 and this is handle, uh, uh, there's, a, there's a routine called uh, authenticate, and then there is a, uh, and you can, uh, you can see down there, it calls, it calls uh, verify user towards the end, right? And then, so, so inside verify user, you have the, the check of user, you know, user ID and passwords, right? So from, from a developer perspective, annotation is, is fairly simple. I've coded the verify user. Here are two checks, check user ID, check password. Here's the access control. I've done my job, right? But if you go back to the code, because verify user is called inside this nested if statement, right? So if the conditions underlined in red fail, Right? The user doesn't get verified. Okay? And uh, so that's an access spike. By, so, so the path coverage algorithm will be able to find that because you've, you've annotated user ID and password, and we found these paths that will bypass your access control. We will flag this as a, as a vulnerability. And, uh, and, and I, I suppose you can imagine that you know, in, the, in, in, in revising and writing code, these things, things like that could happen. You, 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 you take things, you put it in a loop, and, and then and pretty soon you lose track of which path you, you actually did the check. So, so, so we take this as, sort of, again, some preliminary proof that bugs like that are out there, and, uh, uh, and, I, and, and that's really difficult to find with uh, you know, current static analysis tools. But again, by leveraging the knowledge of the developer, by sort of telling us a little bit about the semantics of the code, that we will be able to, to find those kinds of vulnerabilities. So again, this is the, the, the picture, uh, uh, high level picture representation of this. So we did sort of a, a, our mental mapping of, of this against OS top 10. So okay, what sort of problems we can deal with in OS top 10? Obviously injection attacks, we can deal with, with uh, uh, address this with interactive data flow analysis, cross-site scripting, some parts of un, undirected, uh, unvalidated uh, redirects and forwards. Right? Uh, with a control flow analysis, we can do broken authentication, insecure direct object reference. So when you reference an object, we can say, well, where's your access control check, annotation, C serve, and, and then again, some parts of uh, invalidated redirects and forwards. So about 60% of the, the, the categories in top 10 can be in some fashion addressed by this interactive uh, analysis. So again, a quick conclusion of what we have done is, uh, again, the concept of interactive analysis by pushing it all the way to the uh, uh, developers in IDE. Uh, uh, again, two kinds of analysis, data flow analysis, which look at uh, injection attacks, da uh, uh, data validation issues, and control flow, which is you know, dealing with invariance and policies. And we have uh, evaluated with uh, a, 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 a reasonable open source project, and we you know, so, sort of have a proof of concept, things that it, it, it might work. 
and we have tested out with the students and, and, and see that it does have effects in terms of helping them retain and learn and retain information. And uh, so here are some future work. Uh, obviously, you know, we're, we're working on interactive uh, uh, algorithms so that we've worked this incrementally. Uh, we've implemented path coverage. We, now we have to put this together and we have to look at performance. I, many people would ask you, so, you know, how fast it runs. No, I don't know, okay? Uh, my hunch is it's, it's, it's gonna be fast, but, you know, but, but we have to have the code to, to prove that. Uh, so anyway, so uh, uh, I want to acknowledge uh, the National Science Foundation for funding us this work. Uh, Fortify for giving us an education license so that we could do this kinds of stuff. And uh, my student who is currently uh, interning at Fortify for, for, for implementing the first version of, of the code. And uh, uh, most importantly that all our uh, papers and some of this code that we feel relatively uh, stable are all uh, our OS website. And, and uh, it is our intention to, you know, eventually as we find it, things mature, we'll, well, this is the place where all the stuff will be made available to the community. And we, we love to get your feedback and, 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 and down the road participation, contribution to code, et cetera. I'm sorry? Yeah, yeah, a version. Of the, 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 the data flow part is available. It's, is, is, well, we're getting ready to actually do a second release. Uh, uh, the, the one that's currently out there is uh, the older version. What you saw today will be out in the next couple weeks. We're doing a uh, much more uh, live study right now, so, so we have the code ready, so we'll, we'll, we'll ship it out in the next few weeks. We have really not looked at, you know, there's, there's obviously a lot of usability issues, organization issues, and then there's also technology issues, with, with particularly with the way Eclipse handles things, okay? So, so uh, we're very open to that. But, but our, our goal, frankly, is right now to get the algorithm to work and, 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 and get some results are, and, 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 and we haven't really gotten to that. I mean, uh, 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 theoretically, there shouldn't be any problems, right? I mean, it's just, as, as we say, it's a matter of coding. Uh, but, but, but we haven't, have, haven't done that. I mean, whether that's better than, than the alternative, we don't know. I think uh, uh, we, we, we did look at fine bugs. The, the, the difference is what we're trying to do is, is really interactive. I mean, fine bugs is still very much like static analysis. You can run static analysis, for example, you can run Fortify inside an IDE, right, as a plugin. So you write your code, you push a button, you get results, and then you, you look at the results and you correlate to the, 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 the code. And what we're trying to do is skip that step run it continuously and have the warnings be sort of presented right in the context of the code as opposed to having the developer needs to re look at the report. I mean, sort of my analogy is when I learned programming, you know, which was like, you know, I, many, many years ago, longer than I care to admit, that, you know, I used to have a deck of cards and, and throw it in and somebody gave me printouts and I, I look, at the, look at the warnings and figure out which line. I mean, that's the, the mentality of static analysis today, essentially, is you, you read the reports and try to figure out. So we're trying to push it closer to the code. All right. Thank you.